Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. This is Natalie Case, and I'll be your liturgist for this second Sunday of Easter. Easter is not just a day. It is a whole season of time when we remember that Jesus' spirit lives on in each one of us. In the Bible, the early church was described in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Over the next few weeks, we are following our ancestors' traditions. We are creating a temple of worship in our hearts, whether we can be physically together or not, sharing in words and music, breathing and eating together, we will stay connected to our heart source because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. We are going to center our hearts as one to begin. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand on your heart. Let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us take this time to center on you, for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Please join together in our first call to worship. Be still, O heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and calm and center here. You're mine, secure and free. Let's take another deep breath, releasing any tensions in our neck and shoulders, letting those tensions flow out with our breath. Now please pick up your heart stone, sometimes called a worry stone, and let our touch on its surface remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this stone is in our hands right now is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. Please join together in our second call to worship. Into your care, we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love, our life. Now let us light our candles and set our heart stones next to it. And as we do, let's join together in our hymn of praise, Christ arose. Please be in a spirit of prayer. God of love, it's been a long week. We need you now more than ever. 
We ask that you would direct our hearts and minds towards you and fill us with your spirit, bringing refreshing, renewal, peace, and joy. You remind us in your word that you are faithful to carry our burdens. You tell us that you will renew our strength and you promise to give us rest as we come to you. Thank you that your ways are far greater than any of our ways and your thoughts far deeper than our thoughts. Thank you that you had a plan to redeem. Thank you that you make all things new. Thank you that your face is towards the righteous. You are close to the brokenhearted. You hear our prayers and know our hearts. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives that we can be assured no matter what we're facing, your heart is towards us. Your eyes are over us and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you that you surround us with favor as with a shield and we are safe in your care. We give you praise and honor for your ways are righteous and true. We give you worship for you are holy and just. We will declare that your love stands firm forever for your loving kindness endures forever. And let us pray together as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now our praise response, He is Lord. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. We too have gathered with food this morning to nourish our bodies, even as we nourish our souls together in worship. This is very much what our spiritual ancestors did as they gathered in those early days in their own homes. They would bring what they had, and they would share with each other. So it's no wonder that potluck, or carry-in, is in our Christian DNA. As we bless our meal, would you pray with me this repeat-after-me prayer? After each phrase, repeat after me. Let us pray. Holy Peace Giver, we gather in your name. Invited by Jesus, bound together with your Spirit, in union with each other, feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence, so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. And now I invite you to pick something up from the table and let us say the one word that is at the heart of the matter in every blessing that we do with our tables. Repeating after me with gusto, grateful. And let us begin to break bread while we break open the word in our scriptures. This week, we read a passage from the account of the Acts of the Apostles that is a wonderful encouragement and a reminder that death 
is never the last word. Let's hear our scripture. God raised him up. God freed him from death's dreadful grip. Since it was impossible for death to hang on to him, David says about him, I saw the Lord always before me, for God is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the grave or let your Holy One experience correct corruption. You have shown me the ways of life. Your presence will fill me with joy. The David referenced in this passage is the psalmist, and the quote that Peter made is from the 16th Psalm. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices, my body also rests secure. So it feels odd to have moved into the season of Easter, which is a season of celebration during these difficult times. But this is an opportunity to really take into consideration that at the heart of our Christian faith, we're called to live our lives in the belief that death is not the final word. That's why we Christians are called Easter people. The tomb becomes the womb of new life. So what would we do differently if we really believed that we're, we are loved beyond all endings, that there is nothing to fear. Today we imagine Jesus at our right hand, counseling us throughout our days with these words, Peace be with you. This is what he did when he appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. They were locked in a room, fearing for their lives. Does that sound familiar? Jesus speaks these words to us across the ages as well. Here is how the story from the Gospel of John goes. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as Abba God sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Donna Medford, for reading our scriptures this morning. And may we be blessed in our hearing and understanding of God's holy word. God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. ...of my heart that fits so appropriately. Let us pray. You have more light and more truth ready to break forth from your word, O God. May the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My heart is glad. My soul rejoices. My body also rests secure, says the psalmist. I want to go back to the centering meditation that Natalie offered this morning. Would you put your hand over your heart again? And as you do, take a deep breath. How does your heart feel this morning? Let your hand tap the rhythm of a heartbeat on your chest. Before we knew anything about life, before we had even taken our first breath and while we were still in our mother's womb, the first sound of love we knew was in her heartbeat. We were surrounded and enveloped and kept safe and kept warm by her love, by the beating of her heart. I want you to be surrounded and enveloped by God's love in your heart this morning. How is your heart this morning?
Is your heart glad? What makes your heart glad? This morning's sermon is interactive. I want our hearts to be glad this morning and to show God we're glad and show glad that we're merry and joyful to be in the presence of the Lord. Here's what we'll do. Every time you hear the word glad or you hear the word merry, I want you to give God a woohoo. So let's practice that right now. Say woohoo. Woo let's hear it again. Woohoo. <laughs> I said glad. Woohoo. Woohoo. I said merry. Woohoo. I promise you, if you belt out a few full chested woohoos today, you'll be glad <laughs> and your heart will be merry <laughs> for the rest of the day. And you know, you don't have to stop after the sermon. You don't have to stop after our service any time today. If you hear the word glad <laughs> or the word merry, Say, woohoo! If you've been around me for very long and heard my preaching, you know I like to study the original languages of Scripture. I was a pretty good Greek student of the New Testament and a fair to middling Hebrew student during seminary. And I love to look at the meaning of words. And I found something very interesting this week about Psalm 16 that surprised me while I was studying the scriptures this week. It was the word in verse 9 that's translated glad. It turns out that the word in Hebrew is samak. Lachen samak libi. Therefore my heart is glad. Samak, which means to rejoice, to be glad, to be joyful, to make merry. Caught you off guard with that last one. Let's try again. To make merry. That Hebrew word samak reminded me of last week's scripture reading from Jeremiah. And this got me really excited. If you were watching last week, maybe you remember seeing me pick up a tambourine while I was reading the passage from Jeremiah. I picked up a tambourine and I gave it a shake as I read these words from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here's the words. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O Israel. Again, you shall take tambourines, there's that tambourine, and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. You might have guessed, when Jeremiah says merrymakers, he's using a form of that word samak. What is actually written in Jeremiah is mesahakim bimho'ol. Those who rejoice in the dances. Well, this Easter season, these 50 days that lead us from Resurrection Sunday all the way to Pentecost, these days should bring us joy and gladness. Just like Peter preaching in the streets of Jerusalem, God raised Jesus up, he said, freeing him from death because it was impossible for Jesus to be held in the power of death. Therefore, Peter said, my heart was glad. My tongue rejoiced and my body will live in hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And our hearts are glad. But you know, I never realized until this week that sometimes you have to work at being glad. I have to be transparent and honest with you. This week was something of a downer for me. It was a struggle for me to be glad. It hit me like a ton of bricks last Sunday when we sang, Christ the Lord is risen today. 49 Easters. I've sung that song in the midst of the people of God. 49 Easters surrounded by people of faith and a powerful church organ singing the glorious Alleluia, Alleluia. But last week, singing that song, I felt the weight of our separation. 
And I know I've said to you over and over that we are the church together, that we're still the church even when we're apart. And I believe that. I believe with all my heart that we are Christ's church at all times, whether we're together or whether we're not. We are ambassadors for Christ. But it has been difficult for my heart to be glad this week. Another time that the Hebrew word samach shows up in, is in one of my favorite Bible verses, Psalm 122, verse 1. You may have heard me say this psalm, uh, this verse from the psalm, Mati be'oremem li bet Adonai nelek. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I love being in God's house with you. And I will be glad again when we come together in our sanctuary. What a glorious Sunday that will be. But until then, let's do the work it takes to keep our hearts glad. <laughs> let's rejoice in the Lord always. Let's make merry. Because our Lord is risen and we are Easter people. We live our lives knowing that death is not the final word. We know that Jesus is at our right hand, even now, offering us counsel, breathing his spirit into us and saying to us, reminding us, just in case we forget, peace be with you. So I want to hear it now. Let your heart be glad. Woohoo! Let your heart be merry. Woohoo! Let your heart be glad. Woohoo! Woohoo indeed. Amen. Before we begin our prayer time, I'd like for you to lean over and whisper toward someone or toward the phone or computer screen, or imagine a loved one or a church member on the other end of the line and say, peace be with you. Or you can text someone right now that you want to share this with, or if you don't usually text, plan to call when this worship is over and tell someone, peace be with you. Whisper that now, peace be with you. It's difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and people we might be worried about. So take a moment and say out loud to yourself or in the chat box the names of people you wish were right there with you at your table today. As you name them, as we name them together, they are present with us in our hearts.
We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we don't know, but we know they need our prayers and they need God's comfort. For those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home, for those who are caring for those in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, and for those who are afraid. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, I invite you to take a deep breath and invite the Holy Spirit into your heart now. Let us pray. Holy Presence, God in community and creative spirit, it seems that it has been too much. There's too much loss, too much fear, too much grief, too much despair. There's only so much we can handle, and it's overwhelming us right now. Help us, O oh God, to let go of the fear that holds us in its grip and instead cling to hope. Help us, O oh God, to acknowledge our doubts and yet, through them, to trust in you, to know that you are with us, that we are not alone. Help us, O oh God, to have faith that this too shall come to pass, and guide us, guide us all in this time of uncertainty, to focus on you, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Christ we pray. And let us take another deep breath of spirit as our Amen. We know that God sends out our prayers and the Spirit, the breath of God, and that that breath is blowing from within us outward as a spirit of compassion and presence. And all of God's people said, Amen. And now will you join me in singing or humming along to our congregational response, Breathe on me breath of God. Thank you for being as faithful as you have been with your prayers and your offerings. Our ministry continues because of your moral and financial support. As Reverend Michael reminded us, to live as Easter people is to live knowing that death is not the final word. Even in a time of pandemic, we have seen again how God works through difficult circumstances to enact grace, mercy, and love. Have you seen love this week? Has your heart been gladdened? Give thanks and praise to God today through your tithes and offerings. You may mail a check to the church or give online through our website. Please join with me in prayer. Impossible God, you make all things possible. You make all things new. You raised Christ from the tomb. You continue to bring forth life out of death. You raise flowers from the earth after the cold winter. We know you will bring forth life again. In this time, may we deepen our trust in you. May we strengthen our faith in humanity that love can overcome fear and hate. May we broaden our understanding of love to all who are in need. We can change the world because of you. We can become a new creation because of you. Remind us, teach us, and guide us. Amen.
As we close this time together, remember God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, whispering, peace be with you, guiding and directing your path. So do not live in fear, but live in joy with glad hearts. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. And now may the gracious God of our Lord Jesus Christ go with us all to guide us with the light of the gospel and to gather us into God's beloved community both now and forever. Amen. And with glad hearts, let's enjoy this happy music. Thank you.